Hey, what's up everyone? It's your boy, Dave, and we're back with another tutorial in Cubase. We're going to talk about something that may not necessarily be the most exciting thing in the world, but it's very necessary. It's gain staging. Yay! Let's do it. So gain staging is one of the first things you should do to any mix. And I've just chosen some samples from the media bay at random here, but I have this little two bar loop. You get the idea. And I just did that by coming here and just searching through the attribute uh, editor and just pulling in stuff. And then I switched the loops to musical mode and they all fit into place. And that's how you compose with loops. It is super easy. Actually, let me leave that there. So I have these two bars and here's the thing. In uh, mixing, the first thing basically that you wanna do is do do your gain staging. So if you've recorded, these signals are fine. They're not peaking necessarily, but as a whole, if you look, the mix right here is above zero dB by 5.2 dB. And that is just not good. It's peaked out, it's red. Uh, we'll play through, I suppose. Oh, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's peaking, that's peaking, that's peaking. And here's the thing, uh, I mean, I don't think that you should really be recording this hot. For some reason, they give you the loops this hot. Uh, but before you start any mix, you should give yourself ample headroom so you can add and subtract. And so in my mixes, I personally follow this order. It's a uh, gain stage, balance, EQ, balance, compress, Balance, add time-based effects. Balance. I'll try to keep the mix in balance through every stage of the process, just because it's a good rule of thumb. That's what people want when you deliver a mix to them is for it to be well balanced. And if you start with it balanced, um, that, that's always a good starting point. But um, if you're peeking out here, how are you going to add anything to this drum loop? So we'll solo it. It's peaking out at above 1.2 dB. I mean, if I want to add frequency and boost 2K or something to make the snare snappier, it's going to peak out even harder. Uh, so that's really a non-starter. And the way that you combat this inability to have headroom is with gain staging. And the interesting thing is I opened this from an empty project in Cubase and they don't have this rack by default. Now, if you go to your channel settings, you'll see it here pre. Uh, this is actually a rack, and on all of my templates, I have the pre-rack enabled. Uh, I love the pre-rack. I use it all the time. There's a low-pass and high-pass filter, and there's gain staging, and you, you can switch phase, especially if you're recording bass through an amp and DI. You can check your phase by switching at 180. So I the interesting thing about music is, let's take this here. We'll copy it. So I have two of these, and we'll solo this one. And we'll solo this one. If I switch the phase on this, 180. You'll notice you don't hear anything because they're exactly out of phase. And that's, uh, in a nutshell, how, we'll just delete this. Uh, how noise canceling headphones work. They have microphones that hear the ambient noise from the outside and they reverse phase and they try to eliminate that ambient noise. Fun fact, I think, I don't know, quote me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm just totally talking out of my ass and I don't know anything. But let's get back to what I was initially talking about, the pre-rack here in your channel section. I love it because you can do gain staging without adding an additional plugin. And even if, and we'll go back to this example here, um, if you notice the strip is actually after the inserts, but the pre will stay ahead. So if I open up this frequency, we notice that the pre is ahead even, um, So the pre will always be before any inserts and really before anything else in the strip. And that's nice to know. It's nice to have something at the very beginning of the chain, especially to control gain. And I also often do a lot of filtering from here also. Here's your two filters. So So 
So it's good to know that you have two filters and gain control and a phase reverse uh, here on the on the channel settings or uh, here in the mix console if you enable the pre-rack. And that's where I do all of my gain staging from. And uh, people will have different rules of thumbs, but a good one that a lot of people use uh, is negative 12 dB. I've seen uh, Dr. Mix pr propose the negative 12 dB as giving yourself 12 dB of headroom within your mix to work. Now we're 6.2 dB over right now, um, but a good way to check often is to run through the entire song and then look where you're at and then set everything to negative 12 dB. <laughs> And so uh, we want this to be 12.8 lower. So we'll just lower this. And this is negative 0.5. So we want that to be 11.5 lower. This is just quick back of the envelope math. And that should give us a stereo out yield of roughly negative 12 dB, we'll see. So my math wasn't totally right, but if you look, um, Everything's peaking out at negative 12, and then the stereo master, because things play together, is peaking out at negative eight. But that'll give me, on the stereo bus, eight dB of headroom to add uh, plugins. Uh, I mean, on the channels, on your stem, on your group stems, and on your master bus, you'll have eight dB more of headroom to work with. And this way, now if I choose to make that snare a little more snappy, I can do it and then I uh, still have headroom left in my mix. It's not peeking out. And that's the whole reason you gain stage. So this has been just a very quick tutorial to key you into the pre-rack uh, here in Cubase. It's uh, available as a rack setting here on the mix console. And it's also available when you open a channel setting. And to clue you into the fact that if you give yourself headroom, you'll have more options in the mixing phase of the recording process. So I hope you all have found this tutorial useful. If you have, feel free to like and subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.